Hello and welcome to the Anani News. This week's main topics are CNN, Scientology, a history of violence German TV movie, Till Nothing Remains and ACTA, new documents have been leaked Paul Thomas Anderson's latest project has been shut down by Universal Studios. The Master was set to star Philip Seymour Hoffman as an L. Ron Hubbard-esque cult leader, with Jeremy Renner of the Hurt Locker fame, potentially playing his protégé. Before we all scream Scientology conspiracy, it's reported that Universal bulked Anderson's 35 million budget, not at the subject matter. It is hoped they are merely putting the film on ice for the time being. Mark Headley's Blown for Good has been chosen as one of the finalists in religion category for the Book of the Year award. The 16 finalists, which also include Charity and Truth by Pope Benedict XVI, were chosen from a field of 1,400 books. The winners will be announced on May 25th. There isn't going to be a Tattort crime show anytime soon, at least not about Scientology. The title, Tattort, The Dead Man from the Sound, was just a cover for the production of the TV movie Until Nothing Remains, which was supposed to air on March 31st. This was announced at a press conference by the producers of the movie. Meanwhile, Scientology Germany has announced its intention to produce a documentary with statements from the ex-wife and daughter of ex-member Heine von Ron. The author and director of Until Nothing Remains, Nicky Stein, has called for Scientology to be banned in Germany on the grounds that the church is anti-constitutional in word and deed. According to the newspaper Kölner Statenzeiger, there are accounts from Scientology Berlin of bomb and death threats against the church in relation to the movie. The movie has triggered a lot of media reaction from both online and offline media. For example, Tagesspiegel.de writes, Stricter secrecy, a cover name, security, an ARD movie about an ex-Scientologist. It is the most courageous project of recent television history. According to the intro, the movie is based on a true story of a former member of Scientology. For the first time in Germany, this topic is condensed into a fictional story and the organisation is named. SWR's director of TV, Bernhard Nelson, points out that the OPC monitors Scientology since 13 years. The production of Until Nothing Remains was a big secret for months. Everyone involved had to sign a contract guaranteeing their silence on this matter. The movie was shot under the cover name of The Dead Man From Sound. No DVDs were sent out before. Anonymous presence during the first screening of the movie is also mentioned later in the article. More links to this topic can be found on the video description. They will present their own documentary, and this even before German broadcaster ARD airs the SO drama Until Nothing Remains on March 31st, said SO leader for the Germany and Switzerland, Jörg Stettler. On March 24th, Munich-based newspaper Süddeutsche Zeitung announced the presentation of the quickly produced and untitled Cylon Critics documentary, made by the Cylon cult on March 25th in Hamburg. And Hamburg Anons were there. The team of ARD even handed their docs over to Anons, with ostentation witnessed by Frank Bush, SO spokesperson. The silence referred to a video that has not shown up yet, and they say everybody but them is lying. Ouch, what a huge foot bullet. The big Norwegian paper Verdens Gang published a huge seven-page article on Scientology in its weekend edition supplement. The article includes a detailed account of Ger Eisen's defection, as well as information about Marty Rathburn, Mike Rinder, Devolge, DM, Goldbase, Hank von Helvet, Hank from Hell, his manager, their CCHR activity, and more foot bullets from Norway's very own Tommy Davis. OSA loon, Matthias Foss. The Danish online newspaper Politiken.dk published an article about Anonymous, in which Anonymous is mostly described as a bunch of evil genius villain computer hackers. The background check on all the information given was very weak. It seems, according to the article, that all of Anonymous is protesting Scientology and hacks every computer system that has ever come into existence, plus some that haven't yet. Despite having acquired a reputation as evil supervillains, which is pretty cool, we've got to say that this doesn't look like decent journalism. If you would like to harpoon the article, the link is in the video description. The newspaper Les Salai, as well as other Canadian and Quebec media outlets, have issued reports about the situation at Narconon and the experiences of David Edgar Love and others. Typical Scientology programs, such as the training routines, are employed at Narconon, including one where you have to sit still for hours while being insulted the entire time, and some wages are apparently being withheld from employees. Mr Love also said that any books which were deemed incompatible with the Scientology indoctrination were confiscated. He has filed complaints with Quebec's Labour Standards Commission and Quebec's Human Rights Commission, and backs his claim up with a suitcase full of docs. Apparently, he is now in renewed settlement negotiation with Nalkanon, is experiencing great internal conflict, and is currently refraining from commenting to the media. Yes, the birth of L. Ron Hubbard, founder of the Church of Scientology, appears in the calendar published on the website of the Foundation for Pluralism and Coexistence, under the aegis of the Ministry of Justice of the Spanish Government, which promotes the activities of religious minorities. 
The primary aim was to support all non-worship aspects of religious entities with acknowledged roots, Jews, Muslims and Evangelicals. The concept of acknowledged roots was later extended to other groups, Buddhist, Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses. It seems the foundation for pluralism and coexistence does not know the true nature of corporate Scientology. If you'd like to educate them, addresses to Amy or Harpoons at can be found in the thread. Scientology, a history of violence. In a special series beginning Monday, March 29th, CNN's Anderson Cooper 360 takes a close and revealing look at the cult's leadership. Anderson will examine allegations that David Miscavige has for years beaten, kicked and choked top members of the church. The series will also air on CNN International at 10 p.m. ET. Don't miss it! Liberal Democrats being lobbied by Scientologists in the UK Last week we reported about the Liberal Democrats being approached by the CCHR, but it seems there's more to the story than we thought. The Guardian writes, quote, Have the Liberal Democrats been taken over by the Flat Earth Society? This weekend, Liberal Democrat conference goers will have to put up with being lobbied by the Church of Scientology over their war on psychiatry. Previously, the Scientologists have only paid to exhibit at conservative conference. Unquote. It seems that Scientology puts a lot of effort into political lobbying in the UK these days. Let's keep our eyes open for what they come up with next. XRTC stuff blows the whistle. It took her a while after leaving RTC to come forward with the sad facts, but despite recent contact from David Miscavige's chief obstructor of justice, Janila Webster is speaking out. Janila is one more witness to David Miscavige's humiliations, torture and violence against his staff. One example. After one week of sleep deprivation, Janila was very tired. In order to punish her for this, Miscavige forced her to sleep in the bed that was arranged in the middle of the room where her colleagues were. As long as Janila slept, her colleagues were not allowed to leave the room and sleep themselves. Janila is still a follower of Elron Hubbard, though. New Era Needs Internet Superheroes Scientology's New Era Productions is looking for Internet Superheroes. Their leaked job advertisement, sent to Scientologists as an email, says New Era is looking for people who have skills in computers and Internet websites. We do have one post to man up in a specific area and the above competences are required. Your work will be to drive publics and the orgs via internet mail order lines and create then expansion for the churches of Europe and New Era publications. Not only that, you will be responsible to actually generate inquiries using internet technology, you will be doing specific mailings and bring LRH tech into the hands of a people. Before you apply, it is recommended to read Mark Hadley's book Blown for Good, to learn more about the working conditions inside a Scientology enterprise and to have a look at the lawsuit of former staff members against the Phoenix Org. Additionally, the job advertisement seems to suggest an email spam campaign, especially in the last sentence, so keep an eye on your spam filter settings. US Human Rights Report mentions Germany for treating Scientology as a dangerous cult. It says... The government continue to deny recognition as religions to some belief systems, including Scientology. Federal and some state authorities continue to classify Scientology as a potential threat to democratic order. Scientology members reported the use of so-called sect filters by many associations and organizations, whereby eligibility for membership was contingent upon applicants declaring that they do not belong to the Church of Scientology. State education authorities sometimes informed parents and school children of Scientologist activities in their school districts. U.S. officials openly threatened the Berlin Charlottenburg District Administration with a mention in this human rights report if they would not remove a warning sign in front of the Berlin Org in 2009. The District Administration did not give in and the threat was carried out. Quote, the Charlottenburg District Office of the Berlin City Administration placed the posters in front of the Church of Scientology of Berlin on January 22nd. They displayed a large stop sign, followed by a warning from the Charlottenburg District Assembly about the activities of Scientology in the area. Unquote. This all demonstrates how great the influence of the cult continues to be in the US today.